Ladies and gentlemen, filmmakers and moviegoers alike, welcome. Oh, gotta scoop my chair over a little bit. Welcome to this week's episode of Crazy Casual. I'm your host, Three Cups, and joining me Hello. as always is Dorky Dev. Say hi, Dev. Hello. Hi, Dev. How are you doing? Doing all right. How about yourself, bud? I'm doing all right. I'm a little tired since I stayed up till about four in the morning this morning, and then that's 100 percent your own fault, though. It 100 percent is. It's I have an addiction, but it was worth it. <laughs> and its name is Minecraft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aren't we a bunch of nerds back in, like, elementary school? <laughs> We're eight-year-olds playing Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. So, um... <laughs> Do you want to be mad? I can see it. You want to be mad at that. I'm not mad. <laughs> You're Worried. Right. Maybe. It's okay. A better term. <laughs> I can appreciate being worried. So, um, yeah, I'm tired, but otherwise I'm ready. I'm excited to talk about today's movies. Uh, is there anything else, though, that we want to talk about before we hop into the movies here? Uh, no, I got nothing. Nothing. All oh, right. wait, I got something. So Mixer's gonna die. Yeah, I'm... It's weird. The thing that's, like, it's kind of expected... Honestly, at least for me. But I think it's kind of disappointing only because, like, what happens to all those people? Especially the content creators who weren't told that Mixer is shutting down. I think a few had a heads up. Probably the partners. No, no, the partners didn't even know. No, lovely. (laughs) The only people that maybe had a heads up, personal opinion, Ninja had updated his Twitch to say... Like playing Fortnite and Valorant. Mm-hmm. Um, what whether or not he was planning on coming back to Twitch or not at that point, to be foreseen, mm-hmm. right? But you know, leave some ire to the imagination. Um, the other thing too is just like, man, those people who did sign contracts and aren't just like regular partners. Mm-hmm. They're, they walked away with a lot of money in that situation. There's a couple of lucky people out there in that situation, yeah. Others, not so much. Oh, the others, not at all. Like, the weird situation. And it's all, like, you can't, because I don't know if you've been following stuff going on on Twitter. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of outings of people who uh, are scumbags okay. in a lot of ways. Um, it's been what's going on. There's been certain companies that, like, one of the guys at Mixer, mm-hmm. like, one of the heads was apparently one of them. Um, so, don't know if that had something to play in Mixer getting shut down. It's timing, to say the least. Yeah. Um, and, uh, the, uh, the, the fact that also on Wednesday there's going to be the Twitch blackout as well. That's I don't know true. If you saw that trending. Wednesday on the 24th, I did see that. Yes. Are you going to uh, comply? Comply? It's uh, a choice. Yeah. Are you choosing to comply? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah. It's for the right reasons. I mean, like, standing with other streamers who have been taking advantage of in this industry. Um, one of the ones that I've uh, followed for a little while is, or a couple of them, one of them I've talked about before, Austin Marie, the one who inspired the uh, Pokemon trainer mm-hmm. outfit that I got, um, who inspired me to, like, turn the jacket into the Pokemon ja- champion jacket I have it as now. Mm-hmm. Like, she's come out and stuff like that. I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of people that there's a lot I of follow and care about. Dude, it's just, don't be creepy. It's not that hard. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Let's not spend too much time talking on this, because no. we need something the to talk other about thing, on Friday. Yes, well, that is true. We will talk about this all on Friday in more depth. Um, the other thing, so I, send, I tend to show them off here a little bit, Yes. is I got these bad boys. Steven saw these last night. They're pretty cool looking. These are great looking Funkos. You want to see them look better? Sure. Let's see if it works with the lights. Probably um, not. on from the webcam. Eh, oh, turn it off. Yeah. There we go. 
Oh, I'm turning this off for a second too. Now we that can is see so it. fucking cool. <laughs> what a nerd! <laughs> oh yeah, without a doubt, because like the red is turned on, and they look normal for the most part. Mm-hmm. Like because they look like how they're supposed to look, which is still cool mm-hmm. in my opinion. Because they like blend in with the rest of the Funkos back there when they're yeah. all in there, they look normal. But the moment I turn on the blue, they stand out. Man. So you have to make sure that they're front and center. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. I'm kind of regretting not buying the Thor and the Iron Man now. Well, you can always go back. They're not there anymore, and I don't know if we're going to make more. Much disappointing. These haven't even been updated to the, uh, the Funko site yet. Like the Funko little uh, mm. app that I have. They're not even on there yet. Mm, it's disappointing. Well, let me reset this for a second. There we go. White balance is resumed. Things are normal. And then I can do this. Because then it's kind of... Oh, it's not quite right. No, there's something I've messed wrong it up here. somehow. I've messed it up. All right. Well. <laughs> Looks like you can never go blue again. Well, I can fix it later. <laughs> All right. So let's start talking about today then. Welcome everybody to Quick the Casual. Uh, this week, I have called it independent and full of heart. Because these are technically indie films, even though they are partially funded by larger companies uh but uh yeah indie films uh full of heart because these are personality pieces first one we're watching is honey boy second one we're watching is peanut butter falcon the peanut butter falcon i keep forgetting that that's important (laughs) the peanut butter falcon yeah it's the peanut butter falcon Mm, yes hide the garbage it's a single target bag fuck you (laughs) the fact my cable with the extensions able to go all the way out here is actually pretty cool, though. That is pretty cool. Like, I could be out here where it's a lot cooler. It's so much nicer than in that room right now. I don't know if I'm wearing a fucking hoodie because I'm wearing a tank top underneath. But why don't you just put a normal shirt on? Oh, I guess I don't want to dirty it up if I'm. I don't know. All right, whatever. If I'm only wearing it for like two hours, is it I'm gonna really switch out of it. it. I haven't showered. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's start talking about these movies before we scare everybody away. Uh, so, anything if we else? haven't already. If we haven't already. Anything else you... No, nah, we're just talking about movies. You're done talking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to start with Honey Boy. Um, let's start talking about Honey Boy. I... Like this movie, I like. Oh, same, same. I liked it a lot. I it, go ahead. It's a very personal piece. Yes, that was. Uh, I'll give the stats expecting. on it real quick if you don't mind. Go for it. Uh, came out November twenty seventh, twenty nineteen, um, with a budget. Uh, doesn't say budget. Um, but it does say uh, stats for how much it made. Um. 300,000 US opening weekend and then uh 3 million uh for gross US and uh cumulative worldwide gross um on I might need to go to box box office mojo yeah like usually, indie films are hard to find that information about sometimes dev yeah I might also check a couple places just to see Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, Honey Boy. It's an extremely personal piece. It is autobiographical in a way where it is supposedly Shia LaBeouf's t- life before two th- 2017. Well, and a little bit after. Uh, I looked into this a tiny bit. Uh, it is he is Otis essentially. Um, yes. His father is James. Um, which Shia plays, and uh, it's amazing. I love what he does in this movie. And there's so many subtle little nuances that are really enjoyable, but at the same time, I like. I was really excited to talk about this movie until I found out that it's extremely autobiographical. 
because I was like, you want, let's talk about the writing and let's talk about how these characters are actually good real life characters. And it's because these are actually real people. Did you, did you not realize that coming into this? No, I did not. I don't look these things up, Dev. <laughs> I thought I told you it beforehand. <laughs> you probably did, but I didn't pay attention. <laughs> um, that, well, that's one of the reasons I wanted to see it. Um, because, like, honestly, Shia's lived a verily interesting life mm -hmm. um and troubled life as well um especially like during his young adult acting era um he ended up with a damn it that, that's gonna bother me isn't it you can hear it can't you i can't hear anything and you, you can't hear the fan oh a little bit it's only when you're talking uh uh, just keep talking for now and fix it in a second. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the um, I I think it's really interesting because this it's it is a very personal piece, especially towards the end. Um, when they like towards the climax, what uh, I, I, the climax of this movie is the end of this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, but it works in a really good way. Um, because usually push your climax a little bit before the end, but this is like the climax is the end of this movie, and it works in really touchingly personal way in a way that like things that shouldn't have been like and there, there, it's, there's some forgiveness in it mm -hmm. and, but the things that shouldn't have been forgiven aren't exactly forgiven but like it, 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 it's a coming to terms yeah there, this is definitely i would almost say when i was watching this movie uh my nearest comparison to this film would have been it honestly believe it or not like the at least the modern versions of the it movies because yeah. they tell stories of uh, kids coming to terms with their inner demons and their ch ch uh, childhood trauma and then growing up into you know adults who have embraced what caused them to be like what, what caused them this trauma they've embraced it but at the same time they've uh, grown past it so they can better themselves as human beings and that was this only the difference is it is a horror film and this is not this is the farthest from it but i thought it was a very similar motif and for some reason that was the first move that i thought of maybe because i like horror films but whatever no i mean but... that's understandable for you to be the first, <laughs> that's the first like beeline you make mm -hmm. is horror related beelines yeah. um but the the one complaint i do have about this movie is because the resolution as you said it kind of just sort of happens and it my complaint is the fact that a lot of this movie uh, especially up until especially the like last two thirds to three fourths like that little segment there three fourths to two thirds whatever where it's all about shia labeouf's character um of james and like oh their... just... oh you mean james never mind yeah, okay the yeah yeah actual dad sorry that's fair i <laughs> I got confused for a second. Yeah. I'm talking about actual <laughs> physical James. <laughs> his, his, the character he's playing, yeah. not the character who is Shia in him. the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What an interesting what a weird, what a weird. That is first movie. I think we've had that, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was like when it was all about James and then suddenly there's like a 10 year gap where there's no information on what happens with James. So, like, I feel some of it is kind of a cheap solution, but it could also just because that's how it happened in life, and that's just yeah. how it was written. And I don't get me wrong, I like the way it was written. I, I was very pleasantly surprised when I read the written by Shia LaBeouf credit, but I was immediately, I was like, huh, is he a great writer for being able to write this into a film story, or is he just... I don't know. Like, I was conflicted because there's, in Oscars, there are different categories for best writings in motion pictures and documentaries. So, it's like, which one would this be put into if it was put in for, like, a best writing award? That's a tough, tough... I have no idea, yeah. honestly. That's a tough decision because some of this really <laughs> happened, but it was, of course, dramatized in a way. So, it's, it's all enjoyable. That's 100% sure. Oh, so. yeah. No, without a doubt. I mean, I'm personally, this is so far one of the movies since 
It's one of the movies since beginning of our quarantines. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the best movies we've watched that wasn't like notably like. Of course, it's got to be good, like Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like, I think it's one of the better films we've watched since then. I would agree. Um, that wasn't. That wasn't also a like franchise piece that also wasn't like a um i don't know a uh kind of yeah because all, all the other good ones we've watched or or 28 day, days forgot about that that was an enjoyable film i don't know it's interest. it's an interesting spot i guess because it's just like i think it's one of the best films we've watched since this has begun I would agree with you. It was it was an interesting story. It had me feeling a lot of emotions. Like there was parts in this movie where I literally just had to write down how I felt because I couldn't explain it other than just like simple emotions and I was like, "All right, let's see. At this part I'm sad and angry and depressed, and at this part I'm happy and crying and depressed, and at this part I was like there's a lot of stuff that happens in this movie that be it just the tension between two characters as they talk or the lack of tension between characters but the the way they interact with each other themselves that tell complete stories and it was, it was just amazing like two moments in this movie that really stick out to me are um otis and i can't remember the name of the girl Oh, but, uh, but their relationship. Uh, I could probably look it up. I have. I mean, uh, where is she? Shy girl. Yeah, her name is Shy Girl. Played by uh, FK Twigs. <laughs> but uh, I. Like that, their relationship in that movie was something that really stuck out to me, as well as the conversation towards the end of the movie with Otis and James, where it was just a long, unbroken shot of James the whole time, except for one line. Like, and you could just see such great acting in this movie. That's one thing that. Oh I yeah, no, this was great acting <laughs> from both Otis's, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. so I will say, Kid Otis might be a little like, at least with what he was given. Might have been a little bit stronger character-wise than twenty-two-year-old Otis. Not to say that twenty-two-year-old Otis was bad by any means. I think that was the point, though. Honestly. Yeah, because... exactly. Because he's he's repressed a lot of shit at that point, and I think that also stands out to the character. Because mm -hmm. being able to like act out things that aren't actually there but are there, that like it, essentially again repressed stuff. That's impressive, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Especially when you boil it down to, this is a story about Otis dealing with his father. Like, that's the way to put it. And then you realize that this is actually a story, story about Shia LaBeouf dealing with his father. And Shia is playing the part of his father for this other person. And it's like, there's such a complex weave going on, like web of weaves going on here. It's so much like emotion that I can imagine happening too, where it's, I like this movie. There's, yeah, there's not much else I could say because I could go in and I could talk about the silly things where like the, the montage at the beginning of the movie where it tells us everything we need to know about Otis and I kind of like the subtle reference to Transformers right at the very beginning of the movie. That was Where fun. Where you hear the freaking, uh, like, lasery sounds and stuff mm -hmm. like that. No, 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 I... no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, there's a guy there in a, like, weird-ass straw hat. Which, by the way, I, we will have some conversations about that director here the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. Given some more topical news about him. Not that it's new news. It's just... People are finally seemingly giving a shit, which I don't know. Mm -hmm. Back to topic. Um, I enjoyed that because it was funny seeing the whole like like that montage of stuff too, mm -hmm. and like the moments of that were real life, but also had the cut of action in them too. If you didn't notice, um, I'm pretty sure you did, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm still gonna say if you didn't notice for anyone who uh, was yep. watching at home, um, that was cool. It was good. 
Um, and then uh, I liked the references to uh, even Steven a little bit mm-hmm. in this with uh, Kid Otis. Um, well, uh, by the way, they, these are played by uh, Lucas Hedges and Noel Jupe. Or uh, Lucas as the older and Noah as the younger Otis. Um, which uh, the uh, Otis is, or uh, uh, Noah is the son in The Quiet Place, if you remember. Yes. Which. Nah, there's something else to talk about later. <laughs> like. They picked some good cast members. Like... Yes. It One thing that kind of bugs me is budget on indie films have been steadily increasing throughout the years. Which is kind of silly because equipment and technologies are becoming easier to apply and cheaper to apply. But they're hiring higher rank actors and... All this other stuff. And budgets for these movies are becoming so expensive. I wonder, like, at one point, is this no longer just an indie film? And it's just... I, and I know it's all studio, but still. If this was made... Ew. If this was made by Universal, this wouldn't be called an indie film. <laughs> but... No, it wouldn't... It would have been called, like... And this has the exact same quality, if not more quality, than a lot of modern movies that we've seen lately. That's true. Yeah, no, thinking about it, like, well, that's the thing, like, a lot of modern films, um, like, there's two types of modern films that come out. Mm -hmm. You've got your franchise films, um, love or hate them, they're there, all right? Mm -hmm. I know you and I are on, at least leaning on opposite sides of the fence. We're both on the fence, I feel, but we're both leaning on opposite directions of the said fence. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That. We have made that abundantly clear between the two of us. And that's okay. Like, again, franchises aren't for everyone. Um, so, you know, that's fine. Um, and then you've got the, like, re- the, the attempts at something new kind of movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and this would be attempt at something sort of, well, like, this would be put in that category more, if mm-hmm. that makes sense, because it's a unique story. Um, I guess there's also the third category of reboot ghouls. Um, that's kind of what that's this a is. Face. <laughs> I wouldn't call this a reboot ghoul. Because it's 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 a it's autobiographical biopic is what this is. Fair. <laughs> the reboot ghoul is, though, the area we're in. Because, by the way, I figured it out. Because it started out with the, the reboot era. Or no, we went through, yeah, we went through the reboot era. Remember? Reboot sequels and prequels. Well, reboots. Well, we ha- prequels happen first because <laughs> of the prequels. Um, we did prequels, but that I mean that's a weird gray area because prequels technically can tell new stories without being influenced entirely by the, o- the the old story. But we went through the reboot era with like even movies like the Bad News Bears getting rebooted. Mm-hmm. Then we went through the sequel era, which mostly is franchise era too, but. Now we're in what I call the rebootquel era, where it's reboots that are sequels to movies, i.e., like Men in Black International, which was a movie that, that was we watched. A movie that we watched, yes. That's about the best way we can say it. <laughs> I really wish I had more praise for that movie, but man, it was kind of boring. Um, I, it's just well, since we're on that topic of that movie, real fast, I still think it's hilarious that the, both. Um, Tessa Thompson, Tessa Thompson, and Chris Hemsworth, but had their own writers for that movie. They're like, there's the writers' movies, and then they bought their own writers so they could have funnier lines. Which says something. Cause <laughs> some of the lines, like you could see the attempt at humor in that one, but man, the humor in this one's far better. Um, yes. And, and it's far rear, realer. I was about to say, the, hu- the the highs and lows of this movie are amazing. I felt a lot of emotions when I was watching this movie, where I almost came, I almost had cried. I almost had cried. <laughs> almost had cried. Yes, I almost cried. I'm Steven. I almost had cried. I almost had cried. It was. It made me a I sad. I almost had cried. 
I had almost <laughs> cried in the middle of this movie. Like, it was definitely sad. And it's all just because... It's partial misunderstandings, but a lot of it's just abuse and trauma and God. Dealing with that. Yeah. So, and there's so many interesting parts in this movie, too, that really take, speak story. Like, to me, speak volumes, all while not saying anything at all. Like, there's a scene where older Otis is running on a treadmill, and he just dials up the speed. And then he dials up the speed some more. And then he dials up the speed some more. And... That scene in its of, of itself is nothing. But the way that scene was shot was he was on the right side of the frame, which normally if you're looking towards the right, you're positioned on the left side of the frame. So that usually translates to meaning there's a disconnection, there's anger, there's aggression, there's confusion, there's just something's not quite right with this person that we're seeing in this moment. And then you could just tell, as he progressively sped up and got angrier, that he was angry. And it was like, oh. So they're doing the cinematography storytelling, and then they're doing the actual acting storytelling. And it, they do that stuff continuously in this movie. Or it's just very simple, very subtle. But it says a lot. It's a picture that tells a thousand words, literally. <laughs> that's true. Like, that's the best way to put it, honestly. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was a really good movie. Like, genuinely. I wrote three pages of notes on that movie. Wow. And Most of it, of probably us just... Pr like, honestly, I was just seeing this movie, if A, you're a fan of Shia LaBeouf, um, B, if you just want a very unique kind of experience, mm -hmm. cin like, cinematically, um... Because uh, it's definitely something different. Um, that's 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 the best way I can even say it at this point. Like it's it's a very different experience from anything else I've really watched movie wise, especially recently. So it was pretty good, pretty damn good. All right. Anything else you want to say before we give it our ratings? No, I think I'm good. All right, I think I'm good for the rating. Nice. So I'm gonna give you your ten popcorn kernels. How many are you going to give? I'm you? giving this an. I want to give it an 8.5. Okay. Maybe a 9. I'm not sure. I don't know, like... I don't know if it's quite a 9 for me, but I don't know what's holding it back from not, I guess is the best way to put it. Okay. Is it the fact that this is a two-hour-long movie, maybe? It's well, only an hour and uh, 40, if I remember correctly. Let me double check. Uh, hour 34. Hour oh, thirty four, and then about an hour and forty five with credits. So, yeah, if well, longer I than that, I don't think, uh, hmm. the length definitely isn't what what's stopping me from it. Like, I think the length is really good for the movie it's trying to tell. I don't, I don't, I genuinely don't know what's because I like everything in this movie. I guess so. I'm guess I'm gonna give it a nine because I don't have a reason not to. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. it's not a perfect ten per se. Um, because I just, I kind of save those for the movies that like really make an impact on me in the way that like only certain movies can because who I am, but a nine is like, if the movie was one of those movies, that would be, that would be it. So, okay. so hello here, person. Hey, -o. hey, Seahawk. Seahawk mystery box. I haven't seen you in a while, bud. How's it going? So, um, but um, I guess my question is, because I'm going to give this movie a rating of eight, eight popcorn kernels myself. Um, my question is then, because I personally would see this movie, an explanation, then my question is, I would personally see this movie again. I would have seen this in theaters if I had the chance to, or if I had known, but I didn't. Um, so it makes me wonder, like, I, I'm flashing back to Martin Scorsese, in his conversation about Marvel movies and them not being cinema. This is only, this is one of the movies I bring up to validate his argument only because these are emotions in movies that you don't really experience in Marvel films. I'm not going to say that Marvel movies aren't good movies and that they are roller coaster rides, but I would say that this is a movie that contends in like, 
the so many different types of emotions and experiences that you can have at theaters. And you're offended by this statement. I just think it saying it that certain movies can't be cinema is just some people's way of being on a higher horse because they're they don't like it and it's their only way to be better than the rest. Mhm. All right. It's all I want. So to I'm not I, we've had this argument before. <laughs> I'm not trying to want to have the argument. Again. I'm just trying to ask a perspective now because you had said that this is an experience that you hadn't had when watching a movie. Yes. So. I haven't, but also I hadn't had the experience of, like, a, um, Endgame. Seeing, yeah, Cap do his thing, yeah, spoiler free. (laughs) I'm talking about, like, name another moment in cinema that, like, we we aren't going to have an Endgame. I hear you. There's there's monocultures. No, there was Endgame. The next thing closest to that would have been Game of Thrones before it sucked. So well, that's not cinema. Still, that's a show. It's that's a, like there's a slight it, like, difference, pop- but still, I would prefer to work in television over movies any day. But that's because well, you me. get to flush things out better and stuff like that. It it gives you you might have less budget, but you have more time to work with, in a sense, because you have more time to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Um, mind you, have a week to make each episode, but maybe two, it, depending on the show. <laughs> um, no, my 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 opinion on it is that that on that is more that uh, Marvel movies are and can be cinema. Not all of them are cinema, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. What is cinema? Who really knows the difference between that and a movie? Okay, like. It's all opinions. Everyone has their opinions. Exactly. So don't sh- like the, my problem with the Scorsese thing is he kind of shits on the uh, everyone's opinion on this is cinema. But you're shitting on his opinion now. So well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, don't get mad at that. I'm messing with you here. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, my point is more that like it's like. Cinema to someone else is going to be different than what it is to Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, this would be cinema to me, too. But also Endgame is cinema to me. Fuck, like, even though it's a train wreck, Cats is an experience. That is true. Okay? <laughs> does that make it cinema? Or does it not? That's a personal opinion. It is. I've got nothing else to say, so... Good last statement on the topic. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we move on to our next movie? No, nope, let's All move right. on. All right. So our next movie, and congratulations, Seahawk Mixery Box. That is a good achievement, especially because sobriety is a topic in the movie that we were just talking about. <laughs> that is true. That's, That's true. a very important part of the, top of the movie, actually. Mm-hmm. So good on you for your... I'm going to round up because it sounds nice. 160 days. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but yeah, next movie. Next movie we're talking about. I got sidetracked for no reason there. We're talking about the Peanut Butter Falcon. The Peanut Butter Falcon. So um, The Peanut Butter Falcon. Yeah. Uh, this movie. Do you want to do the fancy number stuff there? Dave? I will do the fancy number stuff real quick. This movie came out on August 23rd, 2019. With a budget of six million dollars, U.S. opening made two hundred thousand dollars. Gross U.S. Uh, made uh, twenty million and twenty-two million worldwide. All right, sweet. So made his money and then some. Yeah, and this movie, comma dramedy, about a boy, twenty-two years old, named Zach, with Down syndrome, who wishes to become a pro wrestler. Um, is very cute. It is, as the poster says here on, um, on, on, right now on screen, it says the sweetest darn film of the decade. And I kind of agree with that. There's a lot of sweet moments in this movie. There's a handful of moments that I think are a little cheap. Uh, specifically the ending is one of them that I'd like to talk about a bit when we get to spoilers. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of things I really enjoy about this movie. 
It's a cute, fun little road trip movie, which really, once again, shows you how well um, some act, like how amazing actors can be. Be it that they are people who have worked in AAA blockbuster movies, or people who have never worked in the film before and happen to have Down syndrome. Like, yeah. all of these people do amazing jobs in these movies. And once again, I, like, I'm probably, honestly, tomorrow going to rewatch this movie with my stepmother. Because I was like, you need to see this movie. It was, it's, it's, I enjoyed it. It's really cute. It is funny. There are definitely moments when I question some decisions. Like, there, there's, um, there's, uh, who is it? I guess there's an antagonist in this movie who shows up sporadically. And a lot of his decision, decisions are only there to make the movie tense. But at the same time, I can appreciate this movie for what it is. Which is a good <laughs> movie. <laughs> well, I agree. It's a good movie. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed sitting through this um, just after work today. Um, it's a good movie. Like, I, I, I was pleasantly surprised with it, honestly. Um... I do have to point out this is also is the film that uh, is has our Marvel mm-hmm. Cinematic Universe actor of the day, mm-hmm. um, who actually is in the same month twice now. <laughs> John Berthenall shows up in this movie briefly. He plays a uh, Mark. Um, yeah, Mark. Uh, uh, I think it's Tyler's older brother. Is it older brother? Older brother. Okay. Yeah, that, from the older brother. That was like a relationship that they never really established in this movie, at least not vocally. So I was confused if it was older brother, if it was best friend, if it was... Like, it definitely wasn't romantic significant other. That, for sure, it was not, but... <laughs> definite older brother. This movie also has, like, Bruce Derns in it, Thomas Hayden Church, who... Best known probably as the Sandman, I say jokingly, um, from Spider-Man 3. Um... <laughs> It's got uh, Dakota Johnson, who, you know, she's a, she's a great actress, and I'm 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 sorry for her to have to deal with the fact that there's a certain franchise that will be stuck to her for a while. Not because like, not because it's, like it's necessarily like it, like people are in franchises from time to time, and like mm-hmm. people are gonna f- force people to be that for a while. It's like Daniel Radcliffe and Harry Potter. For people, mm-hmm. or I mean, uh, hey, if you've never seen that movie, you don't know what you're talking about right now. So, <laughs> well, I've to... never seen that movie. You're just well informed. She she played what's her name in Fifty Shades Grey. So Anastasia Steele. Yes, Steele, cause it's Grey, you know. Ha uh-huh. uh-huh. And his last name's Grey. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, okay <laughs> so yeah that movie wasn't very good but her role in this movie was pretty good oh no she's fucking phenomenal in this movie honestly her and Shia like genuinely I feel like have they're, like it's definitely at the start a little one sided chemistry mm-hmm. but I think that's to build it and it builds well because she starts to see his character yeah like don't get me wrong the things it's kind of surprising what they do in this movie to make us like Shia LaBeouf. Because in the beginning of this movie, he's definitely a bit of an asshole. But you can also tell he's going through something. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Not excusing the actions, just pointing out where those actions are probably rooted in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all throughout the time, you can see that he's kind and caring, and it all develops. The, um, the, I guess the question I have is, do you have any characters in this movie that you could be, like, hit or miss with? Like, you could have taken them or leave, left them? Like, um, for instance, the character that I have the most complicated time with is Jasper, I think his name was. Which, he was the blind old man. Oh. Ah! Like, he had he was an interesting moment in this movie and it had like, it was, it was a moment of brief moment of levity. 
and it was a, a transition point for a movie where what we were doing had slightly changed, like the path that we were taking had slightly changed, so they had to do it. But at the same time, I feel like I was would have been okay without seeing Jasper. Yeah, it's kind of... Or whatever his name is. No, you're right, Old Man Jasper, uh, Blind Jasper John is his name. Okay. Um... No, I can, I, I kind of understand where you're getting at there, too. Um, I mean, it's a movie about the South, so certain characters like that show up, I guess, because that's just what movies from the South do. We always gotta make a trip to the bay. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Swamp Boys. No, no, <laughs> that's not our legal property to, to to riff off of. Fine, I'll stop referencing other people. Hmm. Um, I don't know what else to talk about. Like, I'm genuinely kind of like most of the stuff I talk about would be spoiler related. Honestly, right. it's it, like acting wise, it's really good. Um, I think I really I do enjoy the premise of it. I enjoy, um. The fact that also we do get some, like, there are a couple actual wrestlers who show up in this. Um, Jake Roberts plays Sam. Mm -hmm. um, he is, let me double check his name, his actual wrestling name, I'm sorry, sorry. Um, Jake the Snake. Rob. Hold on. I see it here, yeah. Jake the Snake! Roberts! Well, if we look up these other wrestlers, like Anthony Harvey, or, uh, uh, uh... And then Mick! Uh, holy... Mick! The Mankind! Cactus Jack! Foley! Um, are in this movie. Um... <laughs> Mick is just like I think he's the He's just kind of there. He's the I think the ref and then Sam's the uh the the wrestler dude. Not the like not saltwater but Yeah, Sam. the yeah. He's the guy who's hanging out with Sam. Mhm. Mm he is he's Sam the guy who's hanging out with saltwater. Whatever. I got there eventually. Random question. I don't know why I just thought about this. What what was the first name of the 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 Punisher? Not the actor, like the actual character. What's his name? Uh, Frank Castle. There we go. Frank Castle. Okay. So I think there's a slight missed opportunity in this movie to name Mark Frank, but. <laughs> Um, let's see here. But, um... Ooh. No, I agree with you. It's not bad. Not a good joke. So, um, I guess the only other question I have is, uh, without spoilers, do you have a favorite part of the movie that you want to talk about? The... The campfire. The campfire? I do like the campfire scene. You kind of finally get to see them let loose around each other, and and then I say say that or the um, other campfire with the three. Okay. Okay, I can see that. Mine would probably have to be the uh, swim boat swimming, swim yeah shrimp boat swimming scene. That that one was probably one of my favorite moments in this movie. Or um... <laughs> or. <laughs> Or the atomic bomb scene. <laughs> the atomic throw. Yes. That was pretty fun. So. Um, that was so well shot. I love it. <laughs> I It was like the best and the worst part of this movie. Like. But for reasons that make sense. Exactly. <laughs> I loved it and I hated it all at the same time. So that being said. Anything else you want to talk about, or should we just get our popcorns on before hopping into spoilers? 
I'm ready. Um, I'll give you your popcorn. Okay. So for this movie, Peanut Butter Falcon, the Peanut Butter Falcon. The Peanut Butter Falcon. Mm-hmm. I will give it just a slightly lower score of 7.5. I'm giving mine an 8. Yeah. Putting it at an 8. Okay. So yes, Peanut Butter Falcon, it did the thing and the stuff and now we're moving on to spoilers. Let's get ready to spoiler! Alright, now we're spoiling. So, <laughs> in Artemis Fowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, things... I'm sorry. Things... I'll let you take the lead on this one. Yeah. So, things I want to talk about would be... Uh, Opening premise of this movie. Like, how freaking depressing is it that the fact that this movie is basically a boy wants to be treated like an adult rather than a well, helpless... because he is an adult. Yeah. Rather than the helpless child that people think of him as. And he's been essentially trapped in a nursing home for the three years that he's been an adult. <laughs> Because, oh, you. well, he mentioned that he was in there for 2.5 years, and in the movie he's 22, so he's about 19 when he has to when he has a court mandated order to start living in this nursing home, which makes me wonder what happens in the 18 to 19 year because all we know is that his parents abandoned him, like all, everyone yeah. in his family is gone. So it could be tragic accident. It could be because they don't want to take but care they of they don't. Him. That's the thing. It doesn't seem that way. So. Yeah. I'd say more they didn't want to take, like, take care of him. Yeah. And help him. So that's the start of this movie where we have a kid who wants to be an adult and just hasn't had the chance yet because of what society thinks of him. And well, at least ultimately that's kind of what the motive I got from that is. No, and, that's that's that you picked up on it. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why, the only reason why this movie begins is because he had one old man to help him. Which, by the way, that was a character that I forgot to mention. Up the actor that I uh, was surprised to see in this movie, uh, Bruce Dern. Like, yes, I that enjoy- was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I enjoy seeing him. Like, I honestly can't entirely remember a movie in recent that I really liked him in. Maybe like. Hateful Eight, but there's always just seeing him. I'm like, hey! He's also in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Like, was he the guy in the bed in that one? I don't remember 100%. Yeah, he was the guy laying down in the bed. Look at my brain occasionally doing something right. Yeah, look at Brewster and being typecast as the old man who can't even lift his arms anymore. Probably. No, dude, this guy's still got some power, man. <laughs> Even if it's with, like, leverage and stuff like that, that's still... Yeah, he. this is all I can get. And I was like, are you kidding me? You bent more than I could, probably. You're in your 90s, you old man. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the start of this movie, and I wish I could have seen more of him. Like, I would have loved to have had a little bit more of his... Just more of him in general. Because he seems like Agreed. a nice, caring person. And if he somehow reappeared at the end of the movie, I wouldn't have been upset. But Same. he didn't. Um, and speaking of the end of the movie, that's one thing I wanted to talk to you about. Because this movie is also one of those movies where it ends pretty much right at the climax of the film. Where we get the atomic throw. And Which, I love how they did that. I love it, because, but at the same time, it's such a pull. Like... It works so well in this movie, but it's the one moment in this movie that breaks all of your suspension. It's like your immersion is gone because of how that's works. In such a charming way. It works so well. Like <laughs> it it it's everything you want it to be because that's what the movie is led up to. Like but it's so cartoony. It's I want to like uh, 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 do you by chance watch uh, Corridor Digital at all? Yes. 
Did you see their um, VFX artists break down and they did the one about... No, wait. I'm thinking about the wrong group, am I? No, it's... yes, I am. I'm thinking of a Wisecrack. I'm sorry. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Wisecrack that I enjoy. Yes. Um, they you did a re- sent me a video or two. Yes, I was going to send you another one today discussing um, Star Wars episode I forgot three. To send you, I forgot to send you the EJ Exley video that I was going to show you to about Minecraft. It's okay. But in Wisecrack, they discuss um, trolling your audience as a moviegoer, uh, as a movie maker. And the movie they re- uh, talk about is this Chinese or, um, yeah, I think it's Chinese movie. I don't know where it is, honestly. But it's a movie where the main characters are taking place in this, like, gangster drama where it's crime and mobs and they're just going back and forth between trying to kill each other and take over the territory. But right at the very end of the movie, the genre shifts where, like, one of the mob bosses reaches behind him where nothing is and grabs a rocket launcher and starts charging up the rocket launcher for a blast of some kind. And then the other mob boss like reaches into his chest and grabs some sort of like blue orb that becomes a Kamehameha wave. And the end of the movie is these two blasts hitting each other and literally blowing up the entire planet. The next comparable thing would be Monty Python when they're about to storm the castle and then the police God, show that is off. such a great moment! Yeah, and it was one of my most hated moments in the movie ever. At least when I was younger and I watched it, so... Uh, uh, you, 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 your young self sucked. Yeah. I loved that as a kid. I found that hilarious. Because <laughs> it's, it's set up so early in the film that that's going to be what happens. Mm-hmm. But, like, it just seems like a cutaway gag at first. Mm-hmm. And then it's how the movie ends. Yeah. So it's just trolling the audience. And that's kind of how I feel this movie ends a little bit. Where it's so realistic and so, like, beautifully made. And then suddenly it's like, ha-ha, you're flying 50 feet. <laughs> but it's not really a I love really the speed up, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> After he leaves the hands. <laughs> it like, was so good. All of it was so fake. But it worked because he's the peanut butter falcon. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the best part is, too, they explain it. And they're like, yeah, no, we, uh. It's smoke and mirrors. Yeah, we, uh. <laughs> yeah, she closed up with my face and then, uh. I did a cut of some thrown someone. Yeah, like a completely there, different like... person. <laughs> Could you imagine trying to see that live? Like, oh, man, he's going to do the throw. And it's like, he doesn't even do it at all. <laughs> uh, but I, I found that fucking hilarious. I will say, um, I'm happy Shia didn't die at the end. I am and I'm not. I, would, I feel like it would have been such a fucking downer. I felt like movie. it would have been a downer, yes, but at the same time, it would have been like a, an interesting affirmation because, like, not only now did he have a trip of his life that he will remember forever, but now he has a reason to remember what he learned and to try and practice it in the future. And with this movie, what happens is the atomic throw, he gets mugged, but we don't get to see it. We jump to the hospital for 30 seconds. And then we're back on the road with just our with just the two the lady and him, but then they reach back and wake up Shia, like, Yep, we're here. We're in Florida where you wanted to be. So and then the movie ends. Which I feel like I I would have been very bummed out and sad if Shia died. But I think I also would have liked if the movie ended with them going back to the nursing home, him going on the trial that he's supposed to have, and then them finding out that, no, he's not a flight risk. He's not even supposed to be here. And then they let him go. And then, yeah, then I, then that'd be the end of the movie. <laughs> of course, that's me I being... I like it would have been longer. Yeah, it was definitely would have probably added like 10 more minutes. Maybe I feel like it would have cut into my, my schedule the way I had it planned this Your time. Your scheduled Minecraft time? Well, no, I had... I played I played Minecraft while watching the movie. 
I can multitask. <laughs> no, I'm more talking about just my, like, my day. Anyway, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, it's kind of a cheap shot, but at the same time, this movie's such a good movie, like, such an up movie, that I feel like ending on that note just kind of would sour that a little bit, you know? Even if uh, even if it swings back up towards the end. Mm-hmm. But you have to extend the movie then. But that that, that note's still going to be so recent in your taste that it's going to be how you kind of remember the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. And then Instead, he he's just died. Kinda... And he died. Which, in a way, you think about it, would have been okay. It would have been just desserts. Because not only is he damaging some guy's property, he's stealing his crabs, and then he lights a pier on fire. And then runs away from the law. Like, they're aiding and embedding a fugitive for arson. And running, and he's aiding and embedding the a runaway. The never involved. <laughs> I know, it was all vigilante justice. Which, that's another thing. I feel like if I was the crab owner, I think his name was Duncan, was the one who was yes. our bad guy. Um, if I was him, and I saw my crab pots on fire, I wouldn't chase after the guy who did it. I would... Put the crab pots out. And then we hear about the pier being on fire because the crab pots weren't put out. And it's like, well, duh. That makes sense. And then all of this movie's drama comes from Duncan occasionally showing up with his posse crew member and being like, hey, you're doing this Rat now. boy. Yeah. So it's all the, the movie's drama comes from him. And then we don't even get the, like, the resolution of the confrontation. We get a slow motion, cut to, and cut away. <laughs> ah, I think you're being too harsh. Sure. <laughs> I still gave this a 7.5, which is higher than I've given a bunch of other movies. I know. It's kind of sad, but also impressive for you. I can come up with things I don't like about movies and still give it a high score. I know. <laughs> You're not always a hypocrite. Except you are. Most of the time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Those are my spoilery things, I think. I think you did good. Oh, one thing I thought was entertaining was... I, I thought the whole movie they weren't going to address that he's literally just walking around with a shotgun on his back. And once oh, the convenience store? Yeah, this convenience store clerk was like, I, I'm not used to selling the people with shotguns and i was like thank you thank you for being the one person who talks about the shotgun on his back <laughs> like well, not even again, the truck driver I'll that say, he picked up i'll say it is the south it's florida or almost florida but still i was like that's that's a little ridiculous i think don't get me wrong if my mom heard me saying that she'd be like oh. but still no, I think it's, again, if we had, like, let's be real, if we had grown up there, that's probably normal. I, I, personally, this is my opinion, but I don't see the point of ever carrying around live munitions with you. Especially if it's in a shotgun or a rifle. Some would say it's for self-defense. Others would say it's because they want to be the good guy with the gun. But <laughs> for him, it was practical too because um, he was a runaway fugitive who needed to kill cops if they showed up. No, <laughs> because he needed a way to get food too. He's got buckshot; he can kill a buck. <laughs> get some food that way. Hmm. If he needs to, he can hunt now. I will say. That that is an understandable reason to have it. It is like to hunt. it could be justified. I'm not justifying walking into a convenience store with it. I'm just justifying that it makes sense Hitchhiking when you are in one as well. I feel like that truck driver wouldn't have stopped. Even yeah, if he had they a probably, dog. Listen, he probably has one on him. <laughs> Still. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. Uh, I'm 
trying to think, is there anything else? One thing I did enjoy, too, was the fact that they actually used... Uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Zach Gotzigan as Zach. Like, I liked that they actually used um, him, who... God, I can't think of words. Thinking, comprehending. Oh, excuse me. I forgot where I was going with this. Give me one second while I Google what I was thinking. I'll let you get back to it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh, what? How did I? Th- I don't know why my brain, how my brain works this way. I appreciate that they actually use Zach Gottsagen, who is an actual actor who has Down syndrome in real life, and. He does an amazing job. And there have been talks about, you know, people taking roles in movies that they don't belong in because, you know, like, they're whitewashed or they just don't Look want to. you, Scarlet Joe. Them. Yeah. <laughs> or, they, or they hire a person who is handicapped or they hire somebody who's who can hear or who can see to play a blind man. Even though there are plenty of blind actors out there, and like, there's a lot of interesting stuff that this movie does, and I'm thankful for it. And of course, it's a small indie film that does this, but I am very happy that it was at least some recognition that no, these yeah, people I aren't agree. lesser people. <laughs> no, they're not. They're people, like you or I. Mm-hmm. So that's 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 what it needs to be. And he was great. I would watch another movie with him in it. Um, Zach got sagging. Got sagging. <laughs> Thank you for saying that right. A uh, weird thought I had, though, with Bruce Dern being this. I really want to see The Burbs again. The Burbs. The Burbs? I don't know if you've watched that. I have not. With Tom Hanks, Carrie Fisher, um, Corey Feldman. Um, it's an interesting movie. I think you'd enjoy Probably. I probably would. Okay. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Like, spoiler-wise? No, I think I'm movie? kind of... I don't know. I, I just... I feel like this movie's just a good movie to watch. Again. Yeah. There's a lot to unpack with it, and it's pretty enjoyable. So, watch it. My seal of approval. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I guess we're done with... Peanut Butter Falcon and spoilers. And we're moving on to the news. I miss the clackboard. I need to get that working. God dang it. <laughs> I think Dev <Death> died. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, um... News for this week. Uh, Similar as last week, there is not much to talk about like always. uh, Because, you know, things are happening. However, Spongebob Squarepants movie has decided that it's not going to theaters at all anymore. It is going to skip that and just go to straight on demand and to CBS All Access. Fuck! (laughs) So, uh, come August 7th, I believe... um, it was scheduled for May 22nd, but then was postponed to August 27th, or August 7th. So now I believe August 7th, it is just going out straight to On Demand. So, you know, there's that. Kids movie. You know what? More movies are going to need to do that coming soon. Because we aren't, like, like, I think people think more people are eager to go to the theater than they think. I agree and disagree. Because I was, did you listen to the most recent Film House podcast? By chance? No. They they were discussing video on demand movies and they were discussing price points for these movies, and yeah, they were talking about raising the price for these movies, like seeing from on demand, and like their instance their their example was they were talking about Chris uh, Christopher Nolan's movie Tenet, where Christopher Nolan's an amazing director with a lot of prestige. Uh, and they were saying that they would be willing to pay upwards of $40 to 
to watch that on demand rather than going to a movie theater because their logic was they're paying for the movie ticket and most likely than not if they're going out to the movies they're almost always going to get food afterwards so the whole trip itself would ultimately be be around forty dollars is what they're saying so i was like so they're saying forty dollars is an okay amount well i personally and still thinking that the twenty dollars that they charge for these movies is too high. Yeah, <laughs> because at that point you might as well wait for DVD and pay the twenty dollars to own it. Yeah, exactly. Like, sure, if 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 it's for individual people like you and me, these prices are way too much. If they're for families of four or more, I'm for it for twenty dollars. But that's the caveat. Is like. So I, I hear apparently some companies like app it's either Apple or Xbox or something. They're working on some sort of software where they can use your camera to scan how many people are in the room. So if you pay for a pay-per-view and you pay for three people and a fourth person shows up, they'll pause the broadcast until one of the people leave. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. One being like, at least Wouldn't they could can... be illegal. Probably. But it's, I it could be rumor. It was just something that they had also talked about in the film house podcast. But like, if they had options for how much you could pay, you know, like individual tickets, then I'd be okay with it. Where it's like, if one person was watching this movie, it's eight dollars to rent it on demand. But that's not how it's it going to work. Make it cheaper for how many people? Yeah, but it's not like that's not how it's going to work. It's just going to be a straight, flat out rate of however much money. And they were saying forty bucks, but that's no, no. Yeah, no. At that point, if we're spending that much, we are needing we are needing at least at least two other guests. I was about to say, if we're spending that much, we're changing to television shows. And I'm down, dude. <laughs> we're never going to the Fuck movies it. again. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We'll wait for act at home release for film. Mm-hmm. Or, th- or when we can safely go to the theater. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other things that we could talk about. Uh, there's talks about other movies coming out. Like, um, what's her name? Claire Foy, who is uh, known for her work in the movies... Uh, First Man, or The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, or Unsane, or The Crown. I'm just naming things off of her IMDb. Uh, She is going to be the lead role in a horror movie called Dust. Um, Gerard Butler is going to be the star in a a thriller, action thriller movie called Kandahar. Uh, Hugh Jackman's going to be the star of a movie called Ferrari. (laughs) It's just a lot of news of who's being cast for what roles. Uh, I don't think things should go into production again yet, but whatever. It's yeah, they're talking about it. Like Mama I know, Mia, like but... WandaVision's supposed to potentially start getting back into recording season one. Mm-hmm. Or they're doing got to do the reshoots for season one. Yeah, which I mean might have less people on set and stuff like that overall. Yeah, reshoots could be smaller cast and crews, but still, like I. For instance, there was a tennis competition that was supposed to happen fairly recently where it was an exhibition where a famous tennis player was like, you know what, I'm going to hold an exhibition match now that things are starting to liven up and people aren't as sick. Um, Before the contest started, six people who were competitors, well, two competitors and four people who were around those two competitors had confirmed cases of coronavirus. And (laughs) it's just story of people being like yeah i'll go out and spread the virus because we don't think it's happening anymore and this is one of those instances where it feels like it's like yeah i'm rich and famous and i feel fine but as soon as they step out that door they find out that they've had the virus and that they're just now starting to show symptoms like wear your masks stop being idiots (laughs) god because eventually, like, if this doesn't end, like, if, if, like, here in America, if shit doesn't get better soon, we are, A, going to hit 200,000. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which is scary. It's already scary as is. But that's terrifying. 
I, it, I was scared this morning because our brave and oh so clever leader, Mister Number Forty Five, <laughs> decided that the best. No approach, sarcasm, correct? No sarcasm, none whatsoever. No sarcasm, none, none whatsoever. No, Ever. there's no sarcasm oozing out of my mouth right now. Oh no, 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 no. Um, he, he, in all of his wisdom, he decided that the best way to approach. COVID-19 is to ignore it by not testing for it. Well, that's what he said on in his rally mm-hmm. last night. And he was asked about it again this morning. Or not morning. last night, over the week. Oh, was he asked again about it then this morning? Mm-hmm. And he didn't say anything else about it. All he said was, um, we're going above and beyond when it comes to testing. We're ahead of the curve when it comes to testing. So... When our How own, do people look at him as a fucking leader? I don't know. When our own president decides that, yeah, we're going to ignore results because testing for results show that we have results. So if we don't test for results, we can't have the results. So that means that there's obviously no results, right? Like, it's like saying that the cure for cancer is not testing for cancer. Which is I what, saw that tweet. Yeah, I that, didn't get the chance to like it. That was my tweet this morning. So, <laughs> it's just, I... Like, I wanted to go see one of my friends this weekend. He helped me move out here to Arizona, or from Arizona to California. And then when I had to move again while living here in California, he helped me by driving up from Arizona to visit and then help me move. And I had planned to go visit him this week. I'm still trying to do it. Uh, the one thing keeping me back right now is I can't get a single car dealership that I call to answer my calls and call me back because I want to get a, like, service done at the dealership, like, quality, like, factory, quality checkup type thing. But not a single dealership is answering me. And he lives in Arizona, which happens to be the capital of coronavirus right now. So... There's yeah. so many things that are making it so... Well, did I, you hear about the... I know, the, uh, for the folks who keep watching this and go, when are you guys keeping this... With? Sorry, it's just the climate we live in, fuckers. Um, did you hear, though, about the rally in um, Phoenix that's coming up? Phoenix, even better. Um, where the guys who are running the venue for Trump are some big... Uh, uh, Tele whatever they are, tele Christian things. Uh, what are the oh, names? Oh, televan- uh, like televangelists. Televangelists, thank you. Um, they're like, um, they are claiming that they have a newly installed technology oh, yes. in the church that kills ninety nine point nine percent of COVID nineteen within ten minutes, and that folks can know that when you come here, you'll be, be safe, safe and protected. Thanks. To um. God. Well, the thing about that is, maybe your air is 99.9, infinitely, air of COVID in the air. When no one is in the fucking building. But the moment you go in the building, guess what? There's Corona in the building. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. (sighs) <sighs> I hate people right now. There, one of the televangelists I saw, I think it was like four weeks into this. We are now on week 13, by the way, of people who are like week 13 Which is of layoffs. longer. <laughs> Which also, we've been, quarantine has been going on longer than Bach Turner was in jail. Yes. Fun. Lovely. What the fuck, America? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, week 13 of, you know, us supposedly being in lockdown and quarantined, and things aren't getting better. If They're just getting worse, and I don't know where I was going with this, but stay safe. Don't do dumb things. Oh, yes, I remember, but it was four weeks into the into this whole thing where I, there was a televangelist. I think it was the same one who's hosting his event in Phoenix, but I'm not sure. Um, he was talking about how God has the cure for coronavirus and COVID-19. And what he does is he's like, he walks up to the microphone and he literally full lung full of air. <sighs> COVID, you are gone. 
God, different sassy. guy, but <laughs> but yeah, still. he's one of the many who I can't remember his name, but Gus Johnson made fun of him too. He's the guy who put up his really uh, shiny hand, like the dude's hand is scary shiny. And yeah, I know like Phase Two for New York City. I also know like Arizona. We are for Washington. I know Chelan County's not in Phase Two yet because we've been bad. We uh we've been above the uh, state average um, for. Cases not as bad as places like Yakima is that like, at like twenty three percent of the cases in Washington right now mm -hmm. accumulated. Um, they're, they're like they're getting better later. They're still bad, but it's just like, man, just just respect each other's bubbles right now. Like, wear your fucking masks. Like it's not that hard. Come on. Ugh. Okay, so. I'm going to slightly transition away from this issue for now, at least. That's because, fine by me. Because there's another issue I want to talk about. Um, let's talk about racism in America. So, of course, everyone knows that there's rioting. Well, not rioting anymore. There's protesting for police brutality and Black Lives Matter. And, you know, life is it's being is existing. Um, so, you know. People are getting sick, and no one really cares. Uh, people are dying, and uh, some people care. We could tell because protests and whatnot. But um, 30 Rock, the TV show, apparently, if you didn't know this, uh, has had four episodes in it with blackface. And, uh, yeah, this is a TV show that has come out, you know, these last ten years, maybe. And four of the episodes have people in blackface on national television. So what's happened at this point is those 30 Rock is being removed from streaming services and syndication. And all of the episodes that have that, the blackface, are being permanently removed and made unavailable by Hulu and Amazon Prime. Um, and can no longer be purchased on iTunes and Google Play, all because Tina Fey, who owns the rights to this TV show, has gone out and asked these networks and things to not show this anymore. Um, her, her thing here, the quote here says, As we strive to do the work and do better in regards to... Uh, in regards to race in America, we believe that these episodes featuring actors in race-changing makeup are best taken out of circulation. Uh, Faye says in the letter that uh, streamed or uh, Faye said in a letter to the platforms that streamed or sold the show, I understand now that intent is not a free pass uh, for white people to use these images, and I apologize for the pain that they have caused. Um... I, while I appreciate that she understands now that this is a problem. It was a problem then. Yes. This was always a problem. And it's why is this just now being a thing that's brought up? This should have never been done in the first place. Like I I never watched the show. So I didn't know that that was a thing that happened. Neither did I until I was reading wow. these. So people were still doing blackface on national television within these last 10 years. It's ridiculous. And it doesn't help that other people admit it, too. Like, who... Which late-night TV host is it that used to do blackface on SNL? Um, oh, Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. And him having to talk about it lately. And, like, these shouldn't... Never have been a thing that happens in the first place. But, you know, now that people care about black lives... Oh, I gotta be sent... No, people have always cared. It's just now that they're seeing a backlash, they're doing things about it, and it sucks. It's just people need to be better. We need to be better human beings. No, agreed, because, like, that shouldn't have happened in the first place. Like, I didn't realize that. Like, when I heard the Jimmy, or Jimmy Fallon thing, I'm like, really, dude? Like, speaking of the other Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel, like, did you see the clip float around after, because... The other news that, like, I have as well is the fact that, like, some stuff has resurfaced about Michael Bay being a scumbag. Mm -hmm. um, which, if you didn't know before, you weren't paying attention. Because he royally, he blacklisted Megan Fox. 
Like, he's the reason why Megan Fox, like, stopped showing up in movies all the time. Mm -hmm. Because she spoke up against him, and he was like, no. -uh. Yeah. Which, some dumb fucking shit. Um, but, like, you know, he talked about, she talked about the fact that, like, when she was 50, did you hear about how she aud auditioned for him? I did not, no. She explained it on Kimmel that, um, like, how she was auditioned when she was 15 was washing Michael Bay's car in a bikini. That is a great audition. Oh, no, I agree Steven Spielberg is guilty of helping Michael Bay in this situation, too, 100%, because he chose to take her out of uh, the third movie, um, which is the wrong, like, is punishing the victim for speaking out, which, again, it, people go, well, why didn't you say something then? This is another prime example of why people don't say shit. Because they end up being the ones punished for it. I just, I don't get it. <laughs> it's, there's, I always hate these conversations because every single day it's a conversation of, well, he molested me. Well, why didn't you say it when it happened? Well, because this. And then it's either it actually happened and that person's a scumbag or it's, it didn't happen and the woman is lying, and she's a scumbag. So, like, no matter what, the end result is people suck. <laughs> and I hate yeah, these I mean, and the problem is, too... But they happen. <laughs> more times than not... And the problem is, the fact that, like, this is something that's been going on, too, with NASCAR. The fact that, like, when Bubba Wallace... I don't know if you heard, but Bubba Wallace, like, he, in his locker, there was a noose found. I thought it was in his garage. Or in his trailer garage, like, whatever in his, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It was either his personal garage um, or his car's garage, one of the two. Yes. Um, it was in, in, in his work garage. Um, but people are bringing up the Jesse Smollett thing that happened. Like, I don't know. This feels like it might have been staged and like the Jesse Smollett thing. And I'm like, you can't, you can't legitimately take every single time something like this happens and immediately point to the, like, one time it's a bad actor and go, but this, well, there, there's, there's always exceptions. Like I had to have this conversation. Well, I had had this conversation essentially with um, one of my relatives on my dad's side, actually, someone that I barely talk to. But I do talk to him more than I talk to the relatives on my mom's side. But um, he was talking about how he doesn't feel like women actually get paid less than men in work society and he cited google as his example because google was surprised to find out that when they did a survey on how much they paid men to women in their company they found out that google actually pays the women more than they pay the men and they're like oh and this one exception women get paid more than men but that's not the case but he forgot that it was the in this one exception part and we had i we i had this whole discussion with him about how it's like yeah there's always exceptions to the rules. There's always... Outliers. Yes. There's always the one guy who stages a hate crime. Or, you know, whatever. But there's... The one person makes a false accusation. That does not negate the other form. Like, yeah, the other does, people. That doesn't negate the other 99 out of 100 times that this has happened. Exactly. And the thing is, with, like, the Michael Bay stuff especially, the dude's a scumbag. Straight up. Um, and it always pisses me off because you, you always, you joke about the videos where it's like, Michael Bay may be one of the best directors around, but he's just a piece of shit. I've always felt that way. Um, I don't know, man. There's so much shit going on, like with the Bubba thing. Like, man, I, like, I, I believe it is what happened. If it's not what happened, that's going to be devastating because A, if someone staged that, be it one of his crew or himself, I, I do not think Bubba would be dumb enough to do that, um, it's, given the position he's in. I hope to God. It's like... For, but compared, someone, had, someone had to put it there, is the thing. Absolutely. It's, I, it's, it, it, this might be a weird analogy, but it's kind of like talking about how on the same day we had found five black men... Uh, hanging oh. and people are like ah it's suicide it's like 
Oh, yeah. All of them? All of them at the same day, all throughout the country. Yeah, suicide. <laughs> yeah, suicide. Like, yeah. Well, I do love the retort to that when they're hanging the uh, the uh, Confederate statue up on a light post, and I love the comment of, I don't know, looks like a suicide to me, because <laughs> that's how society is now. The only release we get is through humor, because shit, shit's dark, and I fucking hate it. the goddamn piece of shit like yeah and, and the worst just be good to each yeah. other and like Stop being scumbags and it sucks too because it'll always be misconstrued like for instance fox news uh was talking about an event that happened a few days ago in san francisco where i think it was at the golden gate park uh they had statues up commemorating certain people and three of the statues were taken down the first statue taken down was of a um, of a Hispanic Catholic priest who opens nine out of the eleven Hispanic missions in California. Um, his statue was torn down because apparently, after he built his missions, uh, well, specifically he built his missions on Native American land, and then after he left, he forced the Native American people to man his mission so they wouldn't degradate and fall apart. So his statue was torn down. Uh, another person's statue was torn down was um, the, what's his name? The guy who wrote our national anthem. Oh, okay. I can't remember his name, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, his statue was torn down because of the, uh, allegations of slavery with him. And then the final statue that was torn down was a statue of Ulysses S. Grant, um, who, at the time of the Civil War, uh, apparently owned a slave, even though he was a northern general and uh, was the president of the United States at the time. Uh, he, Wait, he had a slave when he was the president? Well, maybe not at, sorry, not while he was the sorry, president. Sorry, my timeline, you, sorry, you're quoting a guy who did a lot of, yeah, you're, no, you're good, you're good, yeah, sorry. No worries. I, I, I'm also trying to, like, get the juxtaposition, but, yeah. Um, he, at one point, had owned a slave in his life. And it may not have been while well, he was the president, but he had owned one. So, uh, some of the protesters toppled his statue, too. But Fox News went on a rant about just Ulysses S. Grant, saying that protesters and rioters are a problem... And they're destroying everything because Ulysses S. Grant was a Civil War hero and at no point did anything wrong in his entire life. And they were trying to spin that the protesters were bad. And additionally, I think it was like The Verge or The Vulture or one of those pop culture magazines. They had talked with a current arch, the current archbishop of the Catholic religion here in California and... He was spinning the argument about how the current protesters are not protesters. They're just vandals and uh, they have hijacked the movement to just do damage. And it's, uh, once again, it's just who you listen to, where you get your sources of media and double checking. Because like, I, I'll be honest, my family in the other room here only listens to MSNBC. So they'll listen to Rachel Maddow show. They'll watch All In with Chris Hayes. They'll tell me something. I'll look it up and be like, well, it's good to double check that. Because even though they, from what I've seen, have so far only told the truth, uh, it's still good. They can skew it a little. Yeah, they can skew it. So it's always good to get other sources and double check the information. So don't just listen. Find no. out. Well, I agree, too. Like, they don't talk about that kind of shit. They don't talk about the moments when, like... And the thing is, most of the protests have been very very peaceful right now. And it's just... Like... It, like... The, the moments that things get violent is when cops push things. Like, the fact... Like, I saw that video of the guy walking, trying to... Like, with his luggage and stuff. Um, I don't know if you saw it, where he's walking with his, his luggage, and he... Uh, like, he's trying to get past the group of cops. Mm -hmm. He's kind of alongside them, and a cop walks real fast that's in front of him and then stops so he'd run into him and then brings him to the ground and stuff like that 
you that ain't gonna hold up in court. No. <laughs> like I, I think there was a, a guy in New York recently who was caught using a suspended chokehold. Like he was ch- yeah. choking a guy, and he was caught on film, and he was like, "Oh, oh, fuck you." He said, "Fuck you" to the person on camera too. Yeah. <laughs> he lost his job today, but still, like. He deserves more than that, honestly. He ne- deserves, like, some form of, like, legit penalization. Because the thing is, a cop could lose their job and just go to another fucking precinct. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Um, and so, like, I don't know, man. Like, because... And the other thing, too, is, like, I really hate the people, or the bad actors who are like, oh, well, I'm going to use the term bad actors. Um, but the people in, like, comments on those things that are like, Oh, but what about before the video? Because maybe he uh, felt that he needed to use it. The dude was tackled by five fucking people and in cuffs. How threatened are you that you need to choke someone in that position? I'm sorry, what? Mm-hmm. Like, there are tons of videos that I've seen lately where it's just like a man standing at his, like, he's been told to exit the vehicle, so he does. He has his hands up, and the police say, get on the ground. He stands there for a second as he waits. The cop doesn't give him a second and kicks him in the back of the leg and, like, tries to force him down. And the guy, in response, was like, oh, what was that for? And because he turns and lowers his hand, the cop tackles him. <laughs> like. And then the other cops on the scene, because the wife is recording, another cop on the scene goes and makes the wife leave the car and is, like, blocking the way of the camera while things are happening. So it's like. It's ridiculous. Everything is ridiculous. Defund and reform the fucking police. But defund doesn't mean completely get rid of them. Oh, Believe it, it or not. It means that we have fucking better systems because cops aren't made to deal with the things that they are called for. Yeah, I was about to say. They are not. There's, there's... This is the problem. There are so many. Watch people break it down, the defund things. Like, freaking, like, I think, uh, like, Steve Miller talked about it. There's so many other videos you can watch. Just watch people talk about defunding the police and explaining why it makes fucking sense. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Cops should not be social workers. They're, workers. They shouldn't be social workers. So if mental health calls happen, they should send a social worker to domestic go. Domestic abuse. Domestic abuse. Um, and then, uh, if there's a robbery, they can sure they can still send cops because that's what they're for. But if there's something worse, like protesting or sorry, like full out rioting because a sports team lost, you can use the national guard. Maybe. Well, they don't use them for that. Remember, that's a lot to happen. Look at look oh at yeah, the time a team win. <laughs> that's not that's not for a an, an actual issue. That's just because of a team. That's okay, and so that's fine. I forgot. I'm sorry because people are allowed to celebrate their sports but not be alive. Yeah. We're going to go on this rant for a while. Yeah, we're done here. (laughs) We're done. There's nothing else to talk about except for how the world sucks. So, (laughs) uh, other than next week's opinion on that, it needs to be fucking better. Mm -hmm. Get out and vote fucking in November. This is the year. Wear your goddamn masks. (laughs) I know it sounds like I'm being aggressive about it, but I'm tired of fucking pussyfooting around it. Don't be scumbags. Don't fucking, like, don't, like, take advantage of people. Oh, I'm just, just... Just just be decent human beings. For fuck's sakes. I, I love that video, LaBelle. Of... I don't remember it. Yeah, she's, like, sitting there having a panic attack, and she's, like, curled up, and she's, like, doing this to herself. And the dog sits in front of her, puts its paws on her hand, and just licks her face. And just keeps getting in between her and her hand so she stops hurting herself. Because that's what the dog was trained to do. <laughs> because Service you... dogs are an- great. Animals are fantastic. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Seriously? Oh! Aren't they great? Everything is awesome. Defund the police. <laughs> I'm just... Oh, I hate it here. <laughs> That's funny. That's actually what I think I was going to call your Resident Evil episode that comes out tomorrow. I hate it here because you say that like 30 times. <laughs> so, um, 
The last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up the show is next week's movies. This is the week that Dev's been waiting for. Oh, fucking grace. I can yell at something that isn't the world. Yep. <laughs> We're oh, next... it's, it's related to someone that I want to yell at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So mm. after we talk about how amazingly bad these movies are, we're going to talk about how amazingly bad that director is. So next week's movies are the first three Shia LaBeouf Transformer movies. The Shia Trilogy. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then following that will be the Marky Mark Duology. Mm-hmm. And, we'll and ex- next week we'll, have, it, we'll, do we'll we announce next, next month's week? movies. Then. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I've got nothing else to say. Neither do I, man. I'm... Be kind to each other. Don't be a Um, scumbag. Just because people look different doesn't mean they're any less than you. Have a good night. (laughs) Wear your mask. Wear your mask. Yes. Don't be scumbags and, you know, take advantage of people. Don't be fucking racist. Shouldn't have to say that. Um, Happy Pride. Because we've got one more week of this month, which we I've, haven't actually. I, 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 we've said we said at the beginning of the month with like the horror podcast, but you know, Pride Month. You know, th- this has been the worst Pride Month in years. Well, like I'd like to call myself an ally, but there's really nothing to celebrate this month. I mean, yeah, because I mean, like, also, like, we're gonna. I'm gonna go on a tangent about the fact that like two transgender African. Yeah. Women were fucking killed too. I fucking hate it in this country. Black what is trans wrong with lives it? matter. Let's... We're done here. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being Good here. Night. No. Sorry, life sucks. This is a fucking down note. But Transformers. Yeah. Uh-huh.